this Smash Brothers Ultimate League claims to know who all of the fighters in Fighters Pass 2 are. Let's break the entire league down. What's happening, my block buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Blocked Content's Leak Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your content for today. And yeah, it's been a long time since we've discussed something quite like this. The magnitude of this is quite amazing because not often do we have all of the characters in the fighter's past to discuss, and right now it actually is from a post that was a very long time ago, so not something new that has just popped up, but something that a lot of people are actually saying, well, spoiler alert, right? This might actually be a real thing. So with that out of the way, I really wanted to say to my audience, you blocked content, my blocked buddies, this might actually hold some spoilers. Like, of course, this could very well also not be real and just something that someone fabricated, but this could potentially hold all of the information to the upcoming three fighters for the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass number two. Now, at this point, we don't know if there is going to be a Fighter's Pass number 3, right? All we know now is that, yes, after Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, we are going to be getting three more fighters. They could potentially be third-party fighters, but right now there's no way of telling who they are unless we get to count on leaks and rumors and speculation. And right now, this one does make a lot of sense. There are characters in here that are going to make a lot of you guys very happy. And of course, you've seen the Geno deconfirmation stuff. And of course, that's very, very sad that all of that had to happen. But it does mean that we can look at those fighters with one crossed off the board. So we have a little bit more information than we had on the other days, right? Now we know at least who it isn't. And with this league that we get to break down, we actually know quite a lot more. And there are characters in here that excite me to no end. I mean, one of which specifically I've talked talked about at length on this channel and I would be super excited that that character would actually come to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a fighter. So let's break it all down. I've also of course been answering many of you guys' questions about Smash Bros. Ultimate and new fighters in our show Question Blocked where I answer your questions. What do I think of your favorite game? How do you start making YouTube content? Well, whatever you can think of, send your question through to blockedcontentmail at gmail.com and I will answer your question live on the show in our next Question Blocked episode. Okay, so all that we're going to be discussing today is going to be this single leak and of course characters attached to it and sort of a general breakdown of that whole situation. Now this comes to us from Balba Sauer on Twitter and first off posts just as we just discussed potential fighters pass spoilers and then of course press the image. And then going on to say, this would be a pretty good pass. The fourth character is someone who was among my most wanted for a while. I unironically really like the third character, but yeah, the second character I'm meh for, but don't hate. So let's dive into who these characters actually are. Now, and if you click it, it says press image to see possible leak, and then goes on to say a post from Monday the 11th of May 2020, which is of course totally insane. Then it goes on to say Min Min and Ninjara from ARMS, Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden, Doom Guy from the Doom franchise, Rayman from the Rayman franchise, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, and Steve from Minecraft. Now, I remember this happening back in the day, and the link was actually functional, so isn't that totally crazy? Now, of course, he follows up with a little bit more of his thoughts on it, saying, also, this screenshot is real and not photoshopped, as seen with the linked tweet. While, yes, it did predict Ninjara in addition to Min Min, predicting Min Min, Steve, and Sephiroth is getting into too much to be coincidence territory. Nothing 100% though. And I totally agree with these characters. I mean, there is a certain chance that, of course, a lot of these rumors and these leaks happen and people are predicting characters left and right. But what it also could mean is that someone could be hitting the jackpot by accident, right? And of course, Min Min is in the game, but Ninjara is not. Did, of course, appear in that trailer, but is not a playable character. Sephiroth totally happened, and Steve happen as well. So what are the chances that these other three characters that are listed below each other would also happen? What I think is pretty funny about this is that those three characters are then mentioned and Sephiroth and Steve at the bottom there and Min Min was actually the first character that appeared in the game. So that's quite funny but also the fact that of course Ryu Hayabusa 
Doom Guy and Rayman are among the most requested characters. And well, if it didn't really include Crash Bandicoot, these three characters would be someone that a lot of people would actually share with, right? I mean, of course, now that we have Steve, a character like Master Chief doesn't really sound all that likely anymore, because of course that would be another Microsoft rep, and for this pass, that would be a little bit too much, right? We got Banjo in the previous pass, now we have Steve in this pass, so maybe if there's a Fighter's Pass number 3, which would be very lucrative for Nintendo, they would really, really win back that development time and cost, it would just make too much sense. So yes, to me, that would be a crazy good choice. Now, Ryu Hayabusa, of course, would have a moveset that would be close to someone like Sheik, and, I mean, other sword fighters, maybe a little bit like Marth, because it would be quick, and, of course, some other traps like that. And a character like Doomguy would also be wholly original, because, of course, it would be the first first-person shooter representative, and, of course, maybe a first-person shooter Final Smash type of deal and the character generally is very violent, so could definitely use a lot of weapons that we haven't really seen before in Smash Brothers. And Rayman, of course, a mainstay in the mascot platformers. A lot of people really wanted Rayman in the game. Rayman doesn't have a costume or anything yet, is a spirit in the game, and was a trophy in Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, so this could definitely happen. And of course, Ubisoft has been getting a lot of content in Smash in terms of Mii Fighter costumes, and they've really been playing ball with Sakurai and the team. So yeah, I could definitely see it as a possibility that Rayman also gets in. So what I think of these thoughts? Well, I think that these are likely candidates aside from this whole leak. Do I believe that this leak is completely real? Well, of course, this was actually posted on that specific date. So the question becomes more, is this actually a prediction? Is this someone who just hit the jackpot and just basically blurted out something that up until this point is actually true? Or is this someone that actually has inside information that has ties to Nintendo and Sakurai and and through May, was it already chosen who the characters are? Well, a lot of people are, you know, pointing to Sakurai's tweets and thoughts about that. So I would generally be really curious if you guys have any specific thoughts on this, any characters from this league that you guys really like, and characters that you can't wait to see in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I would love to know you guys' thoughts, so let me know in the comments down below, and you could actually be featured and read out loud in our next video. And today's comment question is, of course, do you want this league to be real, and who of these characters do do you think should be in? And as for a previous comment question winner, our answer actually comes to us from our user, Christian Lopez, saying, I think the answer is simple. A lot of people overlook the business aspect of Smash Brothers. Yeah, it's great to see so many characters together, but in a collaboration, there has to be mutual benefits for both parties. Gino couldn't do this for Square Sense, he is from a franchise they don't own. If they were working on a remake or sequel to Super Mario RPG, then I think they would have been more open to Sense they would be promoting a collaboration between them and Nintendo. Because of that, the money that would be split more equally than just the original Mario RPG. RPG, where most of the money of that would probably go to Nintendo. Even some of the more irrelevant long-requested characters have to do this. Duck Hunt, Ice Climbers, and that they are all owned by Nintendo, meaning that they don't have to negotiate for their inclusion, and anyone who buys their games on eShop or whatever is basically giving money to Nintendo. Even Banjo, who falls into this sense, he is a Microsoft-owned property, and people would need to buy an Xbox and purchase his game on that if they want to play as that character. Simply put, the community was so fixated on request characters that they didn't consider the business and development side of things. Well, thank you so much for sending in your comment. This gives a lot of insight to the situation, and I totally agree. From a business standpoint, I mean, they aren't really going to, you know, have a more investment in a future franchise. But I don't really agree. I think that they could share the costs between Geno, because it's a Square character and a Nintendo character at the same time. So I don't even know where the money goes from Geno as a me costume, right? That might solve that situation. Well, thank you so much for sending in all your comments. These are always so much fun to read through. And of course, a big shout out to our latest Patreon supporters and the super chats you guys sent during live streams. You guys make block content possible. So if you want to have yourself created in block content style, join me for a live discussion or even have your own ideas become animations, go to patreon.com slash blocked content. There's a bunch of incredible rewards there and they're waiting for you. And remember, if you are not yet a member of the blocked content family yet, hit subscribe now. Smash that like button and ring the bell for 
for notifications and all the news and fun you care about will be delivered on the daily to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you around the corner where there's always more blocked content. See ya.